Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Had to take a small break, yeah, due to my physical therapy, my cycling class, until my body started aching. I'm trying to work with all my joint muscles, so I had to take a lazy weekend to rest. Yeah, and on top of that, um, I actually did one out and bought a Blu-ray and DVD combo pack of Stranger Things Season 2 at Target last night. And I was really lucky to pick it up, even though it's only $24.99, just like the, the Season 1 set. But I got it on Black Friday for 10 bucks. So, unfortunately it wasn't advertised uh, for their upcoming uh, Black Friday deals for Target, but who knows, maybe they might be able to. Uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm fine with it, but I'm just glad I got it. Because yeah, Stranger Things is one of my favorite shows on Netflix. Uh, well, anyway, I did actually pick up a Blu-ray uh, two months ago at Walmart for only five bucks. It was definitely worth it. And that is the cult classic that came out on February 19, 1999 by Mike Judge, the same creator who gave us Beavis and Butthead and King of the Hill, Office Space. Yeah. Yeah, this Blu-ray edition does feature Deadpool, but unfortunately, as he said on the, the post-it uh, note right here, I wish I was in the movie, but I'm not. Yeah. If Deadpool was in the movie, it would have been awesome. Exactly. I mean, he would have taken care of that. In fact, he would have taken care of the boss, too. <laughs> yeah, you can see all these uh, post-it notes uh, all covered for this guy. Though I think he might be the boss, or just uh, an average worker. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, this was a cult classic uh, from Mike Judge. And this was actually a second film that's actually based on the shorts. Milton from 1991 that aired on MTV's Liquid Television. It's a sort of subject uh, program which also features uh, Aeon Flux which eventually became a TV series that's very popular done by Peter Chung yeah, the animator behind Rugrats and all that behind Rugrats uh, but also um, but of course, uh, Mike Judge was very successful with Beavis and Butthead, which originally, which originally though, Mike Judge didn't want to do this film. I mean, Fox suddenly oversees his success with Beavis and Butthead, including its feature-length film that became very successful. Yeah. Not to mention they both worked together with King of the Hill, which was also successful that they wanted him to do a second feature length film. Um, after the success of There's Something About Mary, that this was going to be another comedy that was going to be laugh out loud. But that was the problem. He didn't want to do it. Uh, he felt like this was going to be a disaster. Like they're going to take out, out of the Milton character. Yeah, Milton of course, which is <laughs> underneath this Blu-ray edition. It's a special edition. It's an upgrade from the 2005 release. Uh, yes. <laughs> Played by Stephen Root. And this is his trusty uh, shiny red strapline stapler. Uh, 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 that's my stapler. Can, can I have a stapler please? <laughs> yeah. Special edition with flair. Yeah, we get the joke here. Ed Franson. Um... They, they want to run his character out of the picture, but he, he refuses, so he went ahead with it. Um, it was very difficult for him to actually try his best to keep on going for this uh, particular character-driven movie, because this is what he wants. So he wants to focus on all the characters, including uh, Ron Livingston's character, uh, Peter Gibbons as well as uh, the two characters, uh, Michael Bolton, yeah, no relation to the, <laughs> the pop singer, but yep, it's by coincidence. And an Indian um, character named <laughs> Samuel 
Nike Nana jar. Yeah. <laughs> but you also get some other quirky, um, bizarre characters to join in. So just to make this movie worthwhile. Yeah, and this Blu-ray um, has all the features on the back as, as I show. And, of course, the artwork. So anyway, Judge had to do some reshoots on the ending. The studio didn't even want to add any uh, gangster rap music to join in. Um, but he wanted to have them in. So that's where it became very difficult to have to fix everything in order for this film to set right. And like most comedies that came out, especially in the 90s, with all the other successful films out there. This was not a hit. It only made $12.2 million out of its $10 million budget. It was a flop. Yeah, it probably was a shame to be released in February. I mean, that's how heavyweights uh, have that problem. But And became a cult classic by home video. Yeah, on VHS, DVD, and then at this point on, even Blu-ray which is I, the one I picked up. So, everybody loves this movie because it really taught everyone about how how everyone felt when they had to work so hard and just to get a promotion or having to work like hell at a local office of any kind. And I can see why, you know, people just couldn't take it anymore. You know, they, they're tired of being treated like dirt Especially when they had to sit there in a cubular, you know, just spending time just working your ass off, paper after paper, you know, work after work, all the way straight through the computer, you know, copy all these uh, files, having to deal with a printer that don't seem to work very well, I mean, having to deal with annoyance that's going around, I mean, this is exactly what we felt. Hey, that's that's life. But I guess the moral of the story here is that uh, just quit, quit your job, and have fun with your life until you find a better successful for yourself. But that's the idea. Only for them to get into bigger trouble. So let's uh, begin with the film. It stars uh, Ron Livingston, who's been in several stuff such as uh, Band of Brothers, the the TV miniseries on HBO. Jennifer Aniston from TV's Friends as well as uh, the short-lived sketch comedy The Edge yeah, that aired on Fox. Uh, Stephen Root, yes, who did the voice of uh, Bill in the TV show King of the Hill. He's been in other stuff too, yes, even that awful Robocop Free sequel. Yeah. Unless we say that, the better. Gary Cole, who was in the the Brady Bunch movie, along with its sequel. He's a, he was also in the TV series American Gothic, not to be confused with the current series that, that follow. No, this was a different one that was short-lived. Yeah, that actor. Uh, David Herman from Mad TV. Yeah, he was a regular at the time, before he uh, left the series and moved on. A.J. Uh, Naidu, D. Rich Bader, yes, from the TV show The Drew Carey Show. He was also on The French Prince of Bel Air and then later uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. John C. McGinley, yes, which, interestingly enough, he went on to do uh, the Belko experiment last year. Because <laughs> also Office Space got a mention here. Except he plays a uh, a psychopath later on. But of course, he's been in a lot of stuff, as we all know. Joe Bays, uh, Alexandra Wentworth, Richard Real, yeah, who's been in other movies. Of course, he was in the TV series uh, Grounded for Life. Played the grandfather. Uh, Orlando Jones, yes, Orlando Jones, also from Mad TV. 
But <laughs> you want him to do other films too, like uh, Evolution, uh, Great Pits, Mike Bashane. Yes, Mike Bashane from Richie Rich. Yeah, he's also a comedian, but he was also in movies like Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and Whose Lines It Anyway? Yeah, the, the British version, and so on. And of course, Mike Judge. And it's written and directed by, yep, Mike Judge. <laughs> the movie began set in a company called Inatech. We meet a programmer named Peter Gibbons, who's played by Ron Livingston, who's very frustrated and unmotivated at his local job. His co-workers, which includes Samir and Michael Bolton, Yep, <laughs> no relation to the singer. They became programmers. Yeah, they were both played by Ajay Nadu and David Herman. And Milton Wadhams, you know, who's a, a meek character. You know, he mumbles a lot. And he had to move from Kubler to Kubler. But he always loves his trusty stapler. <laughs> and he's played by Stephen Root. So they're being ignored uh, by the office by their smarmy vice president named Bill Lindberg, who's played by Gary Cole. Yeah, he does that. Mm. Uh, well, um, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, Peter totally hates this guy, and, and I guess I don't blame him because he's such a, a devious jerk. Very smarmy. So their plan was, well, he wanted to quit his job, or maybe he just doesn't want to deal with it. Like, he just wanted to escape, you know, trying to relieve all that stress that he's been going through. And the fact that um, he forgot to um, finish the cover of the TPS report that he has to do. And he also lives in an apartment where next door, you know, he has a neighbor who's a best friend. Uh, <laughs> He likes to watch some porno on TV, and it's a uh, yeah, named Lawrence, who's played by D. Rich Bader. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he, had, he has an apartment with Finn Rawls, has a lot of Ikea furniture around. He's very lonely, and on top of that, his girlfriend completely dumped him. He was also receiving all these calls from his boss, so that's what all of this frustration that's going around that he just can't take it anymore. Of course, Peter had to attend a hypnotherapy session by Dr. Swanson, who's played by Mike Bashane, but he dies of a heart attack just when he was preparing for his uh, hypnotism. So he wakes up the next morning already relaxed. He ignores all the repeated calls from Lindbergh and his girlfriend. And then on top of that, um, he decided to, you know, just hang around at a local restaurant where he meets um, a waitress named Joanna, who's played by Jennifer Aniston, uh, just out for lunch, you know, just to explain about what they're dealing with. Joanna, of course, is already having this bad experience because, well, she had to deal with wearing flares. Yeah, those, uh, all these pins uh, with all these, uh, all these other kinds that you can see on a strap. Yeah, so you have to collect all these uh, flares in order to work um, a higher management. And that's when her boss, uh, named uh, Stan, was played by Mike Judge. Of course, his name was credited as William Kane. Yeah, I guess it's so he could save himself. Uh, but that's okay, I'm, I'm going to mention it anyway. To deal with um, another co-worker who has a tons of flares, 37 of them, yeah. That this is exactly what her boss wanted to do. Also the fact that he wanted Joanna to, to stay at his apartment to watch all these kung fu movies. Yeah, or at this rate, the TV show Kung Fu. <laughs> but it's mostly the TV show. 
So when Peter finally shows up at work, um, he disregards the office protocol, violating the dress code, and started to uh, you know, take Limbert's uh, reserved parking spot. In fact, Limbert actually parked in the handicapped space. And he started to um, refuse to follow all the directions that Limbert had asked him to do. Yeah, this is where he had to explain to the Bobs about how he has eight bosses telling him what to do. But he's just lazy, or in some cases, well, he's not, but he's just he just doesn't care. You know, he's spaced out most of the time, you know, just to get away with pretending like he's working so hard. So during his frustration, of course, just to make him feel better, he just goes around you know, with Joanna to go fishing. He came back, yeah, just wearing his shirt. He took out all these, uh, <laughs> all these uh, dead fish and just cut out all the the fish guts and just put it into the TPS report and <laughs> and so on and so forth he even uh, <laughs> he even uh, takes out a um, a drill and just took out the uh, the one side of, of the cubular where it has all these uh, papers and all these books and everything laying around so that way he'll get to have his own view outside while well, he's just going around uh, having some Cheetos, drinking some Pepsi, while uh, playing a uh, Tetris. <laughs> yeah, well, Lindbergh just came around to see what he's doing. <laughs> they decided to promote him. They wanted to fire uh, both Samir and Michael Bolton, but he doesn't want that to happen. So he's finding quick quick scheme to actually uh, stop Lindbergh's game and yeah, trying to get into uh, an account that's uh, that he copied straight out of a out of a floppy disk so that way they'll be able to fix all these numbers and steal all the money <laughs> out of their accounts and, which leads into bigger trouble you know, all, all these traveler checks around everything so, of course, there's even that, that memorable moment uh, where they had to be frustrated over that printer. Yeah, I'm going to get to that scene uh, afterwards. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Lindbergh has been pushing Milton to having the move to, to every single cubular out there. They keep pushing him. He took his stapler and he just mumbles a lot trying to get his revenge on him I mean he just couldn't take it anymore not, not only that but they they took off the glitch that's coming from his paycheck so because that's why he, he's been working for 15 years receiving all these paychecks so at least he's you know working as hard as he can and not only that but they never shared him uh, his cake I mean, yes, Lindbergh had a birthday, and he thought that, yeah, he was greedy, but nope, <laughs> the rest of these uh, co-workers are, are all greedy, so he never even gets to have cake either, so that stinks. I mean, you feel bad for Milton, too, because of the way he's been treated, like he's like an outsider out of the office school. Yeah, no wonder. So he, even he was plotting some revenge against him. I guess he's setting the whole place on fire, or maybe it just happened. <laughs> uh, so it's almost like a miracle right there at the end. Yeah, this is a very hilarious cult classic that you'll never forget. I mean, definitely uh, shows the the side of, of office as we know it, why everyone hates their jobs, having to deal with their bosses who are complete assholes. You know, they have to move from cubular to cubular. You know, work after work, day by day, night by night, so you just can't take it anymore. But yes, the moral of the story is that you should have just quit and just move on with your life, not having to deal with this anymore until you find a better job. But that's exactly what they had to go for. You know, they had to plot their revenge on, on stealing their bank accounts and to 
suddenly things got screwed up or they just want to find a way to actually uh, destroy them but, I, but hey I thought that's exactly what they they had to achieve to do whatever but uh, the characters uh, they're very bizarre quirky um, has a fun cast right there including Ron Livingston, Jennifer Aniston uh, as well as uh, A.J. Nadu, Stephen Roots, Gary Cole, um, and all the rest. So, But Mike Judge had a smart script, and it really put it together on screen, even if he didn't want to do it. But it really worked for under 90 minutes. One of my favorite moments in this movie, I know everybody else have talked about this, because I know they use this a lot in parodies, was when they took out... Uh, <laughs> the copy machine, you know, the printer, outside of, of a local field somewhere and they just, while well, blasting some gangster rap music that's played in the background, so almost like a, uh, a gangster picture right there where <laughs> all three of them had to take the baseball bat and then they also had to do some high kick, uh, well, they, they started to do all these high kicks on, onto the, the printer until and they smashed it completely. Uh, Michael Bolton had to take the baseball bat and just uh, <laughs> slam it. Just after uh, Samir just used the baseball bat and smashed it all the way to pieces. But Michael Bolton just did that, and then he just punches it all the way. <laughs> then uh, both uh, Peter and, and Samir grabbed him, and then he just he says, oh, "Okay, that's enough." But then. <laughs> he just came back for more and just continued to smash it and smash it so it's finally uh, in, into pieces already. <laughs> I love that. It just really works. Yeah, remember old quotes including Corporal Count Payable Nina speaking. Just a moment. <laughs> or let's say somebody got a bad case of Mondays. I mean, I know we started to get a lot of office-type uh, movies, like Horrible Bosses, and, and of course, The Belko Experiment, and, hell, even the TV series, The Office, <laughs> to join in. So I guess if it wasn't for Office Space, we wouldn't have any of these. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> I mean, you can watch it again and again, and never get tired of it. Especially with all the the music that they chose here and, and what they say so. <laughs> and of course can I have my steeple led back so anyway that's Office Space and I give the film five stars <laughs> of course because <laughs> it's a fun movie and I never get tired of it I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye